Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to me. All right, man. Yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. And I mentioned this in my last video a little bit, but still in all, I'll bring it up. I want to talk about abortions and where I, I stand and how I feel about abortions and why I believe that this has been going on for years and it, it all connects together. And I had to put this all together. So make sure y'all like, share, subscribe to the page. Uh, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like the video, hit the thumbs down. It is what it is. I'll put it to you like this. I really don't care because I don't make money off YouTube. I just like to give my opinion on certain things. So if I end up making money off YouTube, that's fine. But if I don't, I don't care either. So let's get into it. All right, man. I want to talk about abortions and how I feel as though that it's one of the greater, the great divides of black men and black women. Now, let's be honest here. Abortion really is targeted towards minorities. Abortion, Planned Parenthood, and a lot of these clinics, I should say, were targeted towards minorities. I think her name was uh, Margaret Singer. She started this back, I think back in the, in the uh, I don't know, the 30s or something like that. And she clearly was, she clearly was a racist. That's just, you can look it up. She was a racist. She didn't like black people at all. And she had a, she had a mission. She had a mission. Now, Let's just be clear here when it comes to abortions and how I think it affects black men and black women. Now, throughout history of the United States, they've been trying to divide black men and black women. I think it's it's at its peak right now. You still have some black women who who love black men and who who support black men and who never would hurt a black man. And you have a lot of black women who use black men as a scapegoat for certain things. Then you have a lot of black women who despise black men and will never deal with a black man. Then you have a lot of black women out here who just, it's like black men don't even exist. And if they if they are on the ground, what I mean by on the ground is if they don't, they're not like a celebrity status or whatever. So, so those couple of different, versions I should say but throughout time I'm not going to sit here and tell you that black men uh, for for the most part black men wasn't doing things that they shouldn't be doing because I believe that there are a lot of black men incarcerated because they did do some stupid stuff and there are a lot of black men incarcerated because they're innocent and you have a lot of black men under the under under this impression that they have to if they play by the rules of the streets they have to die by the rules of the streets so for example like you had a, you had a lot of black men who who embrace criminology and they shame snitching and they will never tell even if they ruin their life even if they ruin anybody's life it doesn't matter and that mentality really plays into the division of the black family. Now, one of the major parts of destroying the black man, because it, to me, this whole conversation always come back to the black man. And because we're the ones in the, we're the centerpiece of all of this. And I think that a lot of people probably don't understand that, that the black man is the centerpiece of all this. So back to the abortion thing, right? So let's just say, for example, right, I'm a black man and I'm a strong black man and I end up getting a girl pregnant, right? I want a family, maybe not a family, maybe not a family with her, but I want my child. The way they positioned 
us as black men in America and the way they talk about it as if we want to get out of having responsibilities. So what they did was men mentally, they separated us from the woman and they made it appear you know, and in and, and some good cases it is this way, but they made it appear as if it's annoying to be with a black woman or a black woman is, is just too much for a black man. So we go to other, other races or whatever you want to call it. So they kind of made it feel, made us feel like we're race traitors or we kind of are the outcasts in a way. Now, where it comes to the black woman, they made her feel like when they took the black, removed the black man from the home, they made her feel like she was alone and she got help. The government has become her, her, uh, her provider or her helper because you know, all black women don't need the government, but became her helper and became her shoulder to cry on or whatever you want to call it. And guess what? We got you. We'll help you. We'll do this for you. Whether it's welfare, whether it's affirmative action, we'll help you. We got you. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that you're good, but you can't have the dad around because it didn't work. It's not going to work. Or you can get an abortion. You can get rid of the child and you don't have to worry about being tied to that man ever again. Because guess what? He's not going to be around. He's a deadbeat. That guy right there. He won't be around. He, he gonna, he's, he's in the streets. He's going to either get killed or he's going to get locked up. Something's going to happen to him. But I know one thing. He ain't going to be there for you. And this, this is passed down through generation, through generation, through generation. And as we go on, it's become a normal. Uh, it, became, it became normalized. Now you have a lot of these women who believe that the father doesn't have a right to his child. So if she has the baby, it takes two of y'all to conceive, right? Two, not just a man, not just a woman. Both are very important. You need the man and you need the woman. Even if you say, oh, well, you could go to a fraternity clinic, fraternal clinic, clinic and get, get uh, something shot in the egg and all that stuff. Even with that being said, you still need a man's sperm. Now, until they find a way to manipulate the sperm and put it in a woman without a man, that's a big problem if they find that out. But anyway, so what happens is you separate men mentally, physically, financially, you separate them. Now, you make the black woman comfortable enough to where she can constantly get abortions and not feel bad about it. Or I ain't gonna say feel bad, not think about it to the point where she's okay because guess what? She has an option. Because if there's a, a minute thing that she disagree with, with that man that made her get pregnant or help her get pregnant or she got pregnant by, she can get rid of the baby because she has an option. She has a way out because society has told the black woman that the black man is nothing. He ain't, he can't help her. He can't do nothing for you. You, there's no reason for you to have a child by this man because he can't do nothing for you. He can't help you. And, and if, and on top of that, you better find somebody that could do something for you because guess what? You have an op another option. You can have the child and just put him on child support. Even if he wants to support his child, it doesn't matter. You can still put him on child support. So women, black women, we talk about black people. So black women in this country, they gave them an option to eliminate the black man, period. Even if they have a child, and it's a black man, the cycle still continues because guess what? That black man is going to grow up without a father. So now he has to 
fend for himself. And the mother does what? She tries to protect him, but she only can do so much because a woman cannot raise a child on her own without a man. Significantly to where the child is successful mentally, physically, financially. There's going to be something wrong with that child. I don't care what no one says. There's going to be something wrong with that child. Either one of them things, if he doesn't have a good, stable mother and father in his life, because the mother cannot be the man and the man cannot be the woman. He can't be the mother. You have to have a good, stable family. You have to. For, so this way, both of y'all can raise the child right because they can see both sides of the coin. But when you separate it, what happens? That black man hits the streets or he hits somewhere where he has nowhere else to go. And who raises him? The streets, just like the government or just like assistants, raise the black woman. So they separate the two. And guess what? Who hates who hates the government? Niggas in the street. And who hates the uh, 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 niggas in the street? The government. So, bam, there you got it. Right there. Two collide. Now the woman believes that she has the right to do something. And the man believes that he has he, he don't care because you're you fighting against him the same way the government's fighting against him. So guess what? He got another enemy now. So now your child that you done had, so in, the, in, in in return, you totally believe in your head. I don't want to bring a child in this world because I don't want my child to be like his father. Now, your child didn't even get a chance to even be different because guess what? <clears throat> you could have met another man who really wanted to take care of you and your child. Now, some people might say, well, that's a what if. But I would rather that than to destroy my baby. That's like saying, that's like saying, well, I might as well kill myself because there's no, there's no reason for me to be alive anymore. It's the same thing to me. Oh, well, since I didn't get, since I, um, I don't see nothing coming out of this, I might as well just just die. It's the same thing. A lot of excuses come from abortions. It's always, oh, I don't want to do this. I want to just, just be clear. A lot of women are bred to not want to have responsibility. And the way it is now, when it comes down to a lot of these black liberal women who, who say, yes, the yes sisters and the yes queen, get it queen. Yes, sis. Those women, a good percentage of them women really believe that black women are queens or whatever but the other percentage of those women a good a nice good chunk of those women are evil period because they do not care about the black man woman and child they only care about their agenda and the agenda is to separate black people black men and black women you don't never really hear about Unless it's a celebrity or a successful black man, you don't never hear a lot of these people talk about how good black men are. Now, the abortion comes in at when you put most of these abortion clinics in the hood. Now, a lot of these girls, underage girls, you know, fast in the pants. Some of them are molested. They go have this child, or when they go, they go there and they, and they tell you. You don't have to tell, they don't got it to the point where they say, you don't have to tell your mother or your father that you're here. You could just come here. And we can actually form, put a, do a procedure to you, even though that you're underage, we can do a procedure and take the baby out of you. You don't see, or y'all don't see anything, anything wrong with that. You don't have to tell your mother or father. You could just come here and we could just take the baby out of you. <laughs> you don't have to tell your parents who raised you. 
your parents, let's say you had a good mother and father, but you hang home with the wrong crowd and you end up getting pregnant. You don't have to tell your mother and father. And it's it proportionally, this affects black people more because let's be honest here. Most of, even if, even let's just say, even if, even if white women got abortions, right? Let's just say even white women got abortions. Most white families are together. It doesn't, uh, 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 it doesn't really destroy the white family. Most black families are not together. They're not. It's a lot of single mothers and it's a lot of fathers who want to be fathers to their children. And guess what? The mothers won't let them because they're the enemy. That's another thing that I think that people got to understand about, about uh, the black man and the black woman. There are a really good percentage of black men who want to be the father of their children and the mothers won't let them, period. They won't let them. They use them children as weapons and they will not let these men be fathers to the children. They won't. Or, or let's take it to another level. Or they feel as though that he's not man enough. Like, that's always been a problem with me when it came to women and when it came to especially black women is the fact that they tell you how to be a man and they're not a man. But they don't want you to tell them how to be a woman because you're not a woman. That's the whole argument. So they'll say, well, you ain't a man. But then when you try to be what they ask you or tell you that you're not, they still have a reason to say this. So I think a lot of black men do have a lot of errors that we need to correct. But at the same time, the division between black, the black man and the black woman in America is, is, is unbelievable to me. And it will probably be, it's probably going to get worse. But it's, to me, it's unbelievable because you do have a lot of black women who respect their black man. But a lot of black women feel as though that they're queens and they're powerful. They're powerful enough to be put in a position where they don't need a man. And it's not that they don't need a man as in like, I don't need him because I, um, I financially don't need him. No, it's men mentally they feel like I don't need a man. So what they do is they just end up doing whatever they feel as though it's best and they have in their they have in their head a version of how a man should raise a child so what they do is with their version they try to raise a man with that and a lot of times that man comes out mentally deformed so it's very sad to see this whole dynamic play out because you have a lot of uh good black men out here who want to be fathers now, before I get out of here, I do want to say this. Women and women who get abortions and black women who get abortions and women who get abortions. Why is it that the woman, even though it takes two, and this is why I'm going to ask y'all the question, and I want y'all to you know say something in the comments about it. Why is it that it takes two for y'all to make a child? Why is it that a woman gets the last say? That's number one. And number two, why the father doesn't get a say on whether that child should be born or not? What if I'm what if I don't want what if I don't want you to have an abortion? What if I want to take care of my child? What if I tell you, hey, listen, you have every right to have you have every right to be the parent of that child, just like I have every right. It, put, it took both of us to make that baby. I want you to have my baby and I want you to give me my baby. You don't want to, I don't want you to kill my child. Why is it that men don't have that right? Especially that, now, I, I, the reason why I say black men is because we're bred to believe that if they get rid of the child, it's okay because we're cool with it. We're cool with them getting rid of the child because we don't want no child. We want to, we want to fuck, fuck girls and have fun. We don't want no child. Nah, get rid of that child. 
So we believe that. And women in their head about black men, oh, he don't want to, he ain't going to tell you, he's going to be a deadbeat. I know my uncle and my uh, my cousin, they all, my, all of them, they deadbeats. So guess what? He going to be a deadbeat. He going to be a deadbeat too. So no, I don't want to have the baby. So it's a cycle. So guess what? Now you have these people who don't believe in having these children. But what about the men who really want to have the child? And why is it that women can privately do something behind your back, even though you're half of what it is? If I'm half of something, why is it that I can, you can privately go and destroy something that we both created? Let's, let's just take it to business real quick and I'm gonna get out of here. If we were business partners and we created it, we created this business together, right? And I went behind your back. You didn't know. And I sold the business, killed the business. And then one day, I just didn't tell you. And you come in, you 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 find out that. I sold a business right up under you, just gone. You didn't have a say. That's how I feel about when women get abortions and don't tell men. It's an arrangement for y'all together. Just so happens you're the host, but still, it took me and you to make that. That's just that. So, Abortions isn't good, and I don't agree with it. And um, for years and years and years, I was always on the fence about pro-life or pro-choice. I'm completely pro-life now because I totally, I totally get why people uh, feel the way they feel about abortions. And people try to say, "Oh, it sells," or "It's a parasite," or "Or this and that." No, abortions have predominantly destroyed most of a good, let's say if we had a pie and it was a, it was a percentage of black people that were destroyed by abortions and how many black people could have been born and are gone and they've never had a chance out of that pie, I would say maybe 25% of that, 25% out of a hundred. And that's a lot. I think that I would put that towards abortion and I don't agree with abortions and I don't care how people feel about it. That's just how I feel. I'm not insensitive. I don't, I'm not saying, uh, Oh, if you got raped, listen, all that is horrible. I'm sorry. It's all horrible. But again, I'm not a religious person, but if you believe in God and you believe in anything or any other thing or whatever you want to call it, and you say that you walk by God, and this is and this is God's uh, God must have made this put this on you for a certain reason. You can't pick and choose and say, well, things happen, and God wouldn't have did this to me, but yet and still, when all good things happen, God did it to you. It's like no, if God, if God, if you in God's hands and that happens to you, then it's a reason. And then people say the same thing about war. They say, oh, well. I said, well, all these people die in war that believe they believe in God. Well, that was their destiny. So again, I'm not trying to be insensitive when it comes to women that's been raped. Not not any any shape, way, or form, but you have to take it as it comes. So if you believe in the Lord or you believe in God and something happens to you, then you have to use, use the same scenario that you would use about people in war. You have to say the same thing. So that being said, I'm pro-life. And I think that black women and black men need to figure it out because if we don't, it's going to be an even worse division going on. Torture talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. You know what it is.